All right, so okay. welcome to this week's PTC Talks, where we are honored by having Eric Rieger, who is PLM Evangelist at Transition Technologies, and he will have a session on green PLM designed for sustainability. But first, a very short introduction by me. So my name is Torbjörn Pitson, and I'm the Alliance Manager for PTC here in the Nordics, and we are running all these webinars on Fridays every week. But we also invite customers and partners for some inspiration and digital on digital transformation to see what is possible and how to make things happen. And all the past webinars have also been recorded and are to be found on the registration site. And the agenda for today is first a very quick overview of PTC by myself. And then Eric, of course, will run the show by introducing himself and touch base on a few challenges, how to adapt me, and then explain some of the business outcomes. And at the end, we are having this Q&A session, so please keep your questions to the end, or you may also put them in the chat and we will pick them up later on in the Q&A session. So now over to the next slide, Eric. So just a quick overview of PTC. So PTC is a global software company with a headquarter in Boston, and we provide market leading solutions on IoT, augmented reality, PLM, SLM, ALM, and CAD through the digital thread to help companies to accelerate their digital transformation. Now over to you, Eric. Show is yours. Okay, thanks, Torbjörn. Thanks for the introduction. I'm very glad to be here today and to present our thoughts about green PM and sustainability for now. And um, you might be curious about what a PM evangelist means. So let me spend some words in the beginning about my person and let me spend some words about our organization. So basically, I'm Eric Riga. I'm an engineer by heart. I um, studied mechanical engineering in Berlin, did my PhD in this area. And I grew up with um, and I spent my engineering childhood with PTC. So I was with PTC for 26 years until last year, grew up with Winchell and joined then TTPSC last year. TTPSC, I think most of you know the company already, um, which is a consulting organization and system integrator working with PTC since about a couple of decades already, also developed Winchell, a very strong and close partnership with PTC, so we know each other quite well. And as part of our mission, we understand sustainability is a key topic for us, um, which is important for today, but also will become more and more important over the next, next time. That's why we are very much um, passionate for this area of sustainability and Coming back to my childhood and my background about product engineering, we understand sustainability as a key topic for which has to start already in the early beginning of product development. So my words basically, classically, we are thinking in terms of time, cost, quality, and there will be fourth dimension for the future, which is sustainability. So we have a big mental change in front of us, which is mean which means understanding sustainability as part as an ingredient component of um, product development for the future. But let's have a look right now. Um, what is the, What are the current challenges? So basically, currently product development is challenged by predicting sustainability, predicting and understanding the impact of the product. Um, we have to understand and we have to ensure compliance with regulations. As of right now, we have very mixed situation, very unclear situation about which compliance regulations will come, but we have to be prepared for it. And we are right at the beginning of this development, but we have right now to establish a foundation for product development and um, driven by sustainability in the long term. Interestingly, I was attending the Green PM conference last week taking place here in Berlin, listening to industry. And the key message was right now, there are so many relations coming up. There are so many unknowns in front of us. So we have to prepare for this. That's why, and that's also the key talk track of my presentation. Um, we have to lay the foundation today, prepare ourselves for this one. And we should start rather sooner than later about having the right foundation. And it starts with product development. It starts with the very first idea of a product and the concept phase and requirements. So that's why um, we need to think about preparing the future, laying the foundation, and um, being able to face the future. If you look at the entire product life cycle, basically it's very obvious and there's no big surprise. I think that in the design phase, um, 
we have very limited set of data, but if you think about making a change or having a change request for the product, we need to take into account sustainable impact already in this early phase. But we should be aware that a lot of data are growing and become more mature along the product life cycle. We have very rough estimations during design phase. Um, when it comes to start of production, of course, we have more information and more data coming from supply chain, coming more data, more specific data about raw material data and process data. And then finally, we get much more information during the product usage phase. And of course, you might be curious right now, what about disposal? We will come back to disposal, how to take into account disposal. Also, in the conceptual um, approach we are talking right now. But as a summary, basically, we should understand that sustainability data is growing and getting more and more mature along the life cycle. Um, and but we have to make decisions and we have to take this into account. So that's why it's a mental change right from the beginning. Looking forward, um, that's what I would call the dilemma of predictability. So how can we cope with the, all the unknowns? There's a very famous sentence. I heard this a lot of times also during last week conference that 80% of the carbon footprint is already determined during the first 20% of the of the development. So which means we have to cope with the unknown and we have to cover and resolve the what I call the dilemma of predictability. What is our approach of doing this? So basically we assume in the very first phase, we start with static data, which are either experience based, which are estimated or taken from some other well known data sources in the beginning. And then along the product development process, we need to provide a capability to replace assumptions, static data by dynamic data, which are calculated from real facts at the end. But the entire approach is based on the assumption that we start with static data. Um, we have some first assessment and then we increase maturity over the life cycle, replacing static data by dynamic data. Which means basically, um, on one hand, we can start with some KPIs, which are very rough at the beginning, but later on, um, we have to make them more mature. If you think a little bit further in this direction, um, this is turning the entire discussion about sustainability into a kind of different discussion. So basically, um, the question of having sustainability as an integral part of product development means, in other words, that we have an integration challenge. So basically, calculating sustainability means, in other words, we have to integrate data from various sources, either from environmental databases at the early beginning, or from other data sources, but in any case, we have to integrate data from various sources along the entire product life cycle. And most of you might know the environmental database ECHO Invent, and just an anecdote here, which we have um, identified again this week with customer engagements, that looking at ECHO Invent, only 30% of the data are real available. If it become more specific, and that's what turned out again from, from customer engagements. Um, we need only 30% of the data as known from Echo Invent. There might be other material databases. And so, for instance, we also have an integration with the answers and cooperate with the answers here. But then you might have another 60% of data, but there's always a certain amount of data which really is very specific to the customer. Um, again, my anecdote from this week, when you talk about manufacturing processes, you have welding, you have um, blasting of surfaces, but not all the data is known from databases. Again, which leads me to the summary that sustainable, sustainable product development is an integration challenge. So we have to take into account um, data from various sources and there's no one size fits at all answer to it. We have to be flexible in a way that allows us to um, integrate data depending on industry, depending on um, region and wherever the data is coming from. But taking Echo Invent as a material database is just a very good starting point. Um, let, let's have a look um, to the, how it is being implemented. So we from TTPSC, we have our what we call Green Pair and Toolbox. 
And again, that's not one size fits it all solution, plug and play. Um, it's a starting point, which is based on integration capability through OSLC, which allows us to take into account other databases, other data sources. Um, basically, we are clear that the product itself is the key um, anchor point for integrating data. So that's why in our implementation here, of course, WinShare is one of our favorite solutions. So we take into account the EBOM. We start attaching sustainable data to the EBOM right from the beginning. Um, through based on our ThingWorks app, which is our green pair toolbox on top, um, we attach further data and integrate data from various sources. But also as a kind of key finding, we have to be aware that um, sustainable has to be enabled in the brownfield approach. So we cannot intend basically to have just another application in the product development, which is in the greenfield approach. We have to take into account that we have to face a brownfield approach, um, which means integrating our solution, whatever we do, in an existing environment and not also um, not turning upside down engineers' work. So that's another important key finding from our customer discussions that we do not invent design product development from scratch. We have to make sure that we leave the um, designers and product engineer focused on his work and extend the work by getting data out of existing environments and also be able to control and maintain sustainable data in the future. So some, in summary, we have developed a grain of green peer and toolbox which we would call kind of MVP, which is a starting point, which extends existing environment, which also without turning upside down the data model from Winchell, it extends data on top. Um, it's based on existing standards like OSLC, allows the integration through OSLC, enriching data, but, um, either from environmental databases, or, but also from existing company sources of data. But have in mind that basically all the data, all the different data sources are combined together here in a kind of spider web, basically connecting data between different from different data sources. Okay, having said that we have a green pair and two books, you might be curious what's behind this green pair and two books and what's behind this. So let's have a quick walk through the system and let's have a look at the system in terms of snapshots. I know, and also from my customer discussions, um, this is just a starting point. So there's much more to say, much more details, and um, feel free to contact me later on about having more detailed discussion. But for today, let's have a look how the typical story looks like. So we start as normal designer. I told you that we shouldn't turn the designer's work upside down, so he should continue to focus on what he's doing on design. And depending on customer scenario, you might want to add material information already in the CAT system, which you see here on the screenshot. So you can already attach material information, which type of steel is being used in the design first in phase in the CAT system, which is then basically turned over um, to Winchell. So you attach, you start with the design, you assign material information during in the CAT system already. Then, um, this information is handed over to Winchell and the bill of materials on the EBOM, uh, what we call turns green. So you can extract information from CAT to the EBOM already. And you can, sorry, one second, yeah. So you can calculate and do the roll up of sustainable parameters already in this early phase from the EBOM, calculate um, in a roll up the material footprint. Um, the carbon footprint or also applicable for other parameters in the EBOM. Which means if you think a step back and think a bit, you can or in this phase you have a version specific calculation of the sustainability parameters. You can calculate the carbon footprint for each component, um, but you can also roll it up for the entire bill of material. Also, what's important here, I mean, also my impression from last week's and last month's discussion is a lot of people think very much dedicated to carbon footprint, but you should be aware carbon footprint is only one specific parameter, 
There are 16 parameters identified by the European Commission, which are relevant for sustainability. So our um, Green PM toolbox allows taking into account all 16 sustainable parameters in the same way, which allows um, the extension of your approach of this specific scenario from carbon footprint to water usage and all other relevant parameters. You might be curious right now if it's only about um, taking data from design, that's only one specific aspect. Um, having your specific background, you might ask me now, what about logistics? You might have supplier parts um, which have long transportation way. That, so it might be having an impact if they are coming from China or from France or from Germany. So there are different activities which might depend on design itself, but there are other activities um, which are depending on other activities. That's why we have different activities. You can define your own activities. Um, sorry. Um, so either might be directly impacted from the design, so by surface parameters, by volume calculation, it might be impacted by other activities like transportation, by logistics. That's why we basically assume a general activity model in our Green PM toolbox, which allows you to either define if it's coming from design related activities or from other logistics, manufacturing related activities, and take this into account. Also, as part of our Green PM toolbox, you can define target values, which come coming back to what I said earlier already, allows you to basically define even with the conceptual phase target values and along the product development, you can calculate how much different, different you are from your target sustainability and continuously monitor the parameters. Coming back, what I said earlier, saying that sustainability might be the fourth or is expected to be the fourth dimension of product development. Of course, you would like to compare variants then along the process, you might have a change request. You might want to understand and calculate the impact of the change request to um, and make a decision based on this. That's why we assume you have different variants. You can compare variants and have a basically early assessment how this um, is impacting your future design activity. What you see here in the screenshot right now is a com overview about um, all sustainable parameters for different variants. So, which allows you then to compare design um, implications, design decisions, and compare them very early um, and the impact, see the impact on all 16 sustainable parameters. Again, having in mind all the different activities which are to be taken into account. So, you see right now, we have a very, um, you can start very small with having design material assignments taken into account for CFP, but extend this approach coming back again to the, um, to the scalable approach. Let this approach grow, then extend to further activities, extend this to the entire process, and extend this to the entire set of parameters. So that's a quick one through our basic green PM toolbox, which gives you some indication, some idea about What's behind this, allowing you to start very small, but then to grow and scale up the framework in a brownfield approach, integrating further data sources. Um, so what you might then ask, what, what's behind or what is further? So what are your future concept questions? So what do we see? So as I mentioned, so we have a starting point. We introduce scaling sustainability in a very small approach, but then can extend this. You might ask about um, what about future entire life cycle coverage questions? A lot of discussion also from last week. What about a disposal bomb? And if you know windshield, of course, we have a manufacturing bomb. So in having windshield in mind, we can also create a disposal view, which allows us to take into account disposal recycling um, parameters into the entire life cycle view. So the intent we are discussing right now and we have a concept about is to extend our approach from E-bomb to disposal bomb. We have the M-bomb, which is well understood as the bomb, which basically brings together the product. And of course, we think about having this disposal bomb, which is an extension of the M-bomb from basically um, how to dispose and how to dissect the product. 
Also, having the databases, we assume that we can leverage in the future artificial intelligence. So imagine you have done um, an assembly for 1,000 times. Of course, you can leverage artificial intelligence to calculate experience-based values and increase the maturity of this one. So further on, um, <clears throat> we assume that we have our product ecosystem. So of course, having them again in mind, we have Wunsche there, we can extend our approach through the entire supply chain, take into account different data sources, coming back to what I said earlier, that we have to take into account data sources from various sources or data from various sources, and having this OS and C based approach based on a standard, we assume we can extend this to the entire supply chain. And also um, in another dimension, um, we assume, of course, right now we have integration with EcoInvent. Um, we can use answers, but of course we can extend this to other material related system. And we understand also from various customer discussions that there are so many different material related system get providing data. Um, we intend to plan this and extend this to other material um, information, material data related systems in the future. So this is basically a short overview about all the different dimensions and what we understand is a green pair toolbox, which is our starting point for having a scalable brownfield based approach. And if we start right now, it's a very easy, very small exercise rather than waiting for five more years until relations and forces. But we assume we have the right basis for adding um, for having this as a scalable approach. Finally, um, let's summarize what's in our basically toolbox. So what I explained just, we have our green panel toolbox, which allows us to define target values in the very early phase already for the product and manage and monitor the sustainable parameters along product development. We are able to predict, assess, and calculate the sustainability impact from the very first moment with the product, starting with design. We have very first values with the design phase. We can compare the impact on variations, on changes, um, on the sustainability right now. And we assume we have a good basis, a scalable framework for, for our sustainable future, which will basically bring us and prepare us ourselves for future coming regulations um, coming from EU and other compliance regulations. So that's already a very short summary of our Green PM approach, how we think sustainable will be scalable. As indicated, and you might have seen this on LinkedIn already, we're engaging in various um, discussions for very much that we can actively contribute to the future of sustainable um, impact. So many thanks for your um, attendance. Many thanks for your watching and listening to me. And let me open up discussion for um, for any questions, just as a final slide, basically, if you have any questions, so don't feel obliged to raise them right now. Um, you can, of course, contact me by email, Teams, and LinkedIn again. And it's also worthwhile to visit our Green PM webpage, which I indicate here. It might be worthwhile to look at our Green uh, at Green Alliance interview, which we had two weeks ago with yours on LinkedIn. But there are also many other data sources. But anyway, I welcome very much your feedback and your questions. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Eric, for a fantastic overview of such a wide area of like sustainability here. So, uh, as you said, I mean, let's open up for questions. And I think we have already a few, I mean, in the chat. So I will bring up a few here. The first one is, I mean, um, do you have experience in data lake integration approach rather than point to point integration approach? Um, yes, um, so basically we investigated um, if our solution fits also quite well in data lakes. There are two comments I would like to make here. One is about basically how this is um, being connectable to data lake integrations. We did conceptual analysis, integrating our solution into AWS and Azure and can confirm, yes, it looks good, but we should be aware, of course, that um, we have to make it happen at the end. So we feel safe and we feel good. And conceptual investigations turns out it's confirmed that we can basically integrate it to data lake solutions. Secondly, again, from other discussions, I know 
how do we continue to leverage and monitor um, when we think about digital passport? And here right now we have some understanding about that we have um, blockchain solutions which we can use. We did some investigations on using this for digital passport approach and can confirm it's possible. But of course, we at the beginning we make it happen. We need to make it happen. Thank you, Eric. And we had another question here as well from Esa. Which of the data from 16 parameters is the most difficult to collect and fulfill requirements? Um, to be honest, I mean, right now we are spending a lot of work about carbon footprint. That's difficult enough already. But the more, the other data are even more complicated. We are about, so if you think about water usage and so on, I don't think it's too much a challenge in terms of the data itself. It's a more a challenge about having experience around this data. So I know with other customers, it took about six months to collect all the data and to make assumptions. That's why um, I wouldn't say this is more difficult than others. It's more about getting in touch with the data and having gathering the data together. And it's, there's no other way than just doing it. Conceptually wise, I think, I um, wouldn't say there's too much difference. It's about picking up the data and starting to make it happen. Mm -hmm. Right, thanks. And I think there is another question here, maybe a little bit related to the, what you actually answered on, but still, how do you see manufacturing metrics potentially being integrated? Manufacturing metric, sorry? Uh, manufacturing metrics, yes. Yes, and um, again, this is a bit the question which I had at the beginning. Yeah. Or a comment which I made about um, conceptually wise, it's very easy, but I know from our customer discussion and going into detail right now, the hard work starts really when we talk about the matrix and the manufacturing methods. I mentioned the example about from a recent customer, from current customer engagement, that only 50% of the manufacturing methods are really available from material databases. And that's an open, that's why we have to work together with the customer, make it happen gathering data from specific customer or manufacturing methods. And that's where the hard work starts. So there's no, um, it's easy to do answer here right now. We have to do it and make it starting with assumptions. So the answer is basically in summary, um, partially yes, but we have to look into the detail and start our engagement. Yeah, thanks. Uh, I pick one other here. Uh, do you have any solution to evaluate the environmental impact of the service activities as well? Of the bandit service? Yeah, the service activities. To, ah. uh, yeah, right. Um, we have some overview. Um, we are working together with some other suppliers. But um, yeah, we have to do it. We have to make our hands dirty. So I'm not exactly sure if this answers the question right now, if I got it correctly, but alternatively, I could come back later on then. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a please. more detailed answer. That might be a good uh, idea. Sure. And another question here also. Uh, how do you see the possibility of integrating with the, the grant material database? I mean, this is much more advanced and then I can tell you right now. So we are in close communication with answers already, and we are doing it right now in other customer engagements, and we also in close communication with Dave Duncan from PTC about doing this. So right. the answer is yes, we can do it, and we have some experience on this already. Fantastic, good, good. And uh, just another one, uh, you mentioned material as an input parameter directly into the CAD model. Is there any other input which you take? I'm not sure if I got the correct uh, the question 100%, but um, from customer discussions, I know some of the customers like to have it already taken into account in Creo CAD. Mm -hmm. So some of the customers like to have it um, assigned in the PM system. Of course, um, we understand basically that different existing best practices and customer process needs to take this into account. My understanding is right now, and my view is that most of our there's a certain amount of customers and best practices which take this material already in CAT into account, but there's nothing which we can say from our perspective. It's we need to look at the best practice at customer side and take this into account and understand sometimes data is coming and assigned in the CAT system already. I know there are other customers having different data assigned or in the CAT system. 
But um, in general, we have to be open. It can come either from the cat related activity, it can come from other customer specific processes. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Eric. Uh, another question here as well. Uh, you said you helped customer also with getting the right kind of data. So do you have any general advice for smaller companies to create data in their production and uh, environment? Um, in fact, there was an interesting survey from a German institute here about gathering where the customer stands right now. It turned out that basically, and I, th I think it was about 6% of the customer have some Excel sheets, but there's no other database available right now. If it's about how to start with it, I would really suggest um, let's have a kind of workforce group and sit together and get the data and understand much better the data sources. So investigate current. That was also my impression from attending last year's conference on sustainability that um, I hate to say it, but usually Excel is the most common starting point. And then I suggest really start with our Winchy Green uh, PM toolbox. Yeah, right. Thanks. I have one last question here. Actually, actually, also to sort of, I mean, summarize everything here. We all, I mean, have heard, I mean, that it's an urgent need of addressing sustainability. So, I mean, how do you actually get started? I mean, today, and, and are there any kind of I mean, low-hanging fruits? Yeah, I mean, um, the how to start point is very good. I think um, it's very easy to start right now with an ex approach like the Green Pair and Toolbox and have at least the databases established and make sure that you basically monitor, start to monitor the data and then have it growing all the time. So long your fruit would be really to have this extension of PM by an approach like our Green PM toolbox and then start to enrich data um, over the time. So which means, which, which allows you to have a databases, having at least a starting point for any reporting regulations and then start to make it mature over the time, but it's easier to start today, having this database is being installed and available, rather than wait for three more years and then um, look to how to respond to any regulations, obligations. Yeah, yeah, thanks. Folks, time is unfortunately running out quicker than mm -hmm. expected as always. So many, many thanks for uh, joining this session here. And of course, a special thanks to you, Eric, for sharing a lot of super interesting stuff here. So with that, I hope to see you back already next week for a new session on automotive embedded validation processes with Code Beamer by TCS. So stay tuned and have a fantastic weekend, everyone. Take care. Thank you. Thank bye you, Tobin. Thank bye you. Bye. bye. See you.